We are visiting Calm and with me is Cecilia Rodriguez, Executive Director of the program. How are you, Cecilia? I'm fine, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. I would like to start by asking you what Calm is and what's the mission of it? Calm is the one organization in Santa Barbara County that is solely committed and dedicated to the prevention and treatment of child abuse by providing comprehensive assessment and prevention and treatment services. How did Calm start here in Santa Barbara? Calm started almost 40 years ago um, when a young man um, killed his infant son. It was, it was sad news that um, affected one woman, her name was Claire Miles. She decided that infant death was not going to happen here in Santa Barbara County and so she put a phone line in her house. Mm -hmm. She got some of her friends together and they used to take turns answering the telephone. They put an ad in the paper and answered phone calls of stressed parents. Which are specific goals that you have set for your organization? Well, it would be wonderful if we didn't have to exist, if we could work our way out of having to treat child abuse. Mm -hmm. um, because fundamentally, we would like to move away from the treatment of child abuse and to move towards prevention. Let's prevent child abuse entirely by supporting young families with the um, stressed parents and giving them the services they need so that child abuse never happens. Now, talk more about those services that you just mentioned. How many do you have and <clears throat> are those for children, families? How do you divide them? Um, we have an array of services and I think it's best for me to talk about them in, in three ways. The, fir the first by ages. Mm -hmm. We have our programs for the zero to five children. And of course, that includes the parents, uh, you know, in, in that kind of um, treatment. But these are our prevention programs where we get referrals from physicians, pediatricians, obstetricians, mm -hmm. the public health department, the county's mental health services, uh, child welfare services. They make referrals to us of families who they think might be at risk. There might be a history of mental illness in the family, there might be a depressed mom, a very young family, a very young new mom. We all know what the risk factors are and, mm -hmm. and those families need particular support. So we give them that. We, we send home visitors to their home to help them bond with their babies, to assess that the baby is reaching their developmental milestones, to teach the parents, both the mothers and the fathers, about what to expect. So that's one of the categories. And the other two? The other two. Then, then we go to the next stage again, which is older, older children, 7 through 11. Well, mm -hmm. in some of these cases, children have been abused, mm -hmm. and we have a, a child abuse treatment program that helps them recover from the trauma of the abuse, um, teaching them mastery so that they don't have to be victimized again, helping parents of those children to become the support that that child needs. We have parent-child interaction therapy that also helps parents to uh, parent their children that have some challenging behaviors. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, have services for the older child, maybe 11 through 18 or 20, who um, often those are children that are part of the mental health system that have been taken out of home often or at the point of being removed from their homes. Mm -hmm. And so we support foster parents in, in parenting these children, or we support parents so that they don't lose their children. Now tell me, uh, I know behind these programs are a lot of people working and some of them might be volunteer, but you do also have professionals working with oh, you, Oh, absolutely. Right? Can you absolutely. tell me more about your staff? Yes. We have a wonderful staff of um, over 50 professionals. We have uh, licensed marriage and family therapists, licensed social workers, interns and trainees. We have a psychiatrist on our staff who comes um, uh, once a week who also will work with our families and help with you know, medication management and so forth. Now how can people participate if somebody is listening and would like to be part of CAMP? How, um, what can they do? Oh, we have volunteers. Mm -hmm. We have volunteers that provide much needed um, support services to our staff, for our families. One thing that we're very proud of, and, and I mentioned our staff, is that we have over 
fifty percent of our staff is Spanish speaking. Mm -hmm. They're bilingual. They're bicultural. Uh, that has really helped us to focus on the Latino population. About sixty-eight percent of our clients are Latino. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them don't speak English at all. So we have all of our services in English and Spanish. How do you get funded? Oh, we have a variety of funding. We have, we have contracts with the government. Mm -hmm. So we are able to provide services to um, in, uh, families that have Medi-Cal. That's good. Um, we also have grants from the state um, that provide some of our services for our clients that can't pay anything at all. We have, of course, we depend on the private foundations that fund, for instance, our, the Orfila Foundation. In great part funds our Great Beginnings programs. Um, so does the, the Bowers Foundation. Um, but then we also depend on the community at large because some of our programs really don't have any funding streams. So mm -hmm. we, we have to um, depend on those contributions. And we have had very generous donors who have always, you know, they really see the, the uh, importance of providing um, th this kind of support to the children of our community. After all, they are the most vulnerable in our community. And it definitely, we want to have a strong community. We need to really help everybody, yeah. not only ourselves. Yes. yes, and during these times, these challenging economic times yes. for all of us, for this whole country. And you can imagine, while it's stressful for us, what it must be like for a family that's poor, that's isolated, that is having real difficulty, you know, parenting, um, and it, it, it makes the need for our services even stronger at a time when it's really challenging to pay for those services. So if there's any viewers that are listening who would love to help mm -hmm. in this way, they can contribute. To they can. can you provide us with your website and phone information or even location for people Right. If they, you know, need further Yes, we're located at the corner of um, Victoria and Chapala Streets. Um, we're in a nice old churchy looking building, which in fact was a mm -hmm. church. That's why we have these stained glass yeah, windows. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, our phone number is 965-2376. We always have someone who answers our phone, speaks both English and Spanish. And our website is calm Four, that's the number four, kids.org. Well, thank you very much, Cecilia, for all that information. I know it's, your program is very, very, very important for our community. And if you are listening to us, please contribute to whatever, maybe your time, maybe money, or maybe just by spreading the word to a friend that needs it. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. For more information on the Nonprofit Spotlight, check our website at www.spchannels.tv or call 963-3893. If you'd like your nonprofit featured in a future Nonprofit Spotlight, contact us at the information on your screen.